Dear Karate, what happened? You used to be cool. There was a time when someone said they trained karate that struck a fear in other people's minds. Karate used to mean something. Immense power, force, unrelenting spirit, a deadly skill for self-protection. Nowadays, it's synonymous with unconventional footwork, evasive maneuvers. Tonight you showed a whole new style in a lot of ways. You were really wide stance, you were landing almost like a karate style. And other things. As schools continue to train for competition, to get more medals, to go to the Olympics, what has become of this deadly art? And what can we do about it? One thing karate is missing, and we at Karate Culture believe, is an underlying driving force of practical training. This is grit. There are stories of karate masters who did not care about rank or medals, but just wanted to turn their bodies into a human weapon. Listen to this quote from Okinawan karate master, Anko Itosu. He states, the purpose of karate is to train the human body to become as hard as rock and strong as steel. To effectively develop the hands and feet to be used as spears or arrows. And to develop a strong spirit and brave heart through continuous practice. Nowhere in this quote does Itosu say, the purpose of karate is to tag your opponent on the side of the head with a loud yell to receive points in a tournament. <laughs> Now imagine what karate would look like if schools focus on developing practical skills through grit and heavy training. Number one, karate students will look completely different, physically. With emphasis on resistance training and using kata in a practical manner, karate practitioners would eventually hit a technical roadblock. In other words, most techniques won't work unless you have some base foundational strength. Therefore, more karate students would focus on strength and conditioning. Number two, schools would be more collaborative and not blindly accept information from an authority figure based purely on rank. Check out this quote from the founder of Shitoryu Karate, Kenwa Mabuni. He says, A kata is not fixed or immovable. Like water, it's ever-changing and fits itself to the shape of the vessel containing it. He continues, Kata are not some kind of beautiful competitive dance but a grand martial art of self-defense, which determines life and death. So why is it that most karate practitioners have some dream of climbing a mountain in Japan to train under a master, only to get their downward block corrected and move two inches to the left? Did we all forget kata molds to the individual? Your body type, your physical ability, your strengths, your weaknesses, all dictate how you apply your kata. And that's going to be different than your sensei and your sensei sensei, and so on and so forth, as it should be. Now, with the Olympics coming in 2020, we, as a global community, need to take a step back and see what this means to our practical art. The increased exposure to all karate schools can be a blessing in disguise, or a final nail in the coffin of what small pockets of practical karate is left in the world. On a positive note, we have the option to change this, if we so choose.